Hello, my name is Karina Venter. I'm an allergy specialist dietitian at Denver, Colorado, where I also have a faculty position as associate professor of allergy and clinical immunology. I would like to thank Professor Ruby Bavankar, president of Apache, to talk to you today about a topic that's close to my heart, and that's the role of nutrition in non-communicable diseases, and today we will focus on asthma. I just need you to be aware of my disclosures. And so in the next few minutes, we will briefly link asthma, obesity, microbiome, and nutrition. As we all know that asthma has got both an inflammatory as well as an allergic component, depending on which particular phenotype we're dealing with. Um, the microbiome, and particularly the air microbiome, is important in asthma outcomes, and the airway microbiome differ between healthy individuals and individuals with respiratory diseases. The microbiome in um, individuals, and this is data from adults, uh, with obesity and asthma also differ, and the graph that I would like to highlight is the graph here at the bottom left-hand side, where you can see that the microbiome of non-obese asthmatics, obese asthmatics, and obese non-asthmatics uh, greatly differ. Um, when we look at transcriptomics outcomes, focusing on immune outcomes, you can also see that there's stark differences between non-obese asthmatics, obese asthmatics, um, and obese non-asthmatics in the green bars, but the red bars refer to the obese asthmatics. We know that immune regulation is modulated um, in many aspects by the gut microbiome, particularly relating to the short chain fatty acids such as butyrate produced by the gut microbiome. Um, and um, we can see here from this data that gut bacteria reduce allergic inflammation in the airways through the release of short chain fatty acids. So what I've shown you so far is that both the immune system of the, um, the gut microbiome and the immune system modulated by the lung microbiome can affect asthma outcomes. And there's some more data on short chain fatty acids and um, inflammatory um, outcomes in the lungs. So how can we feed the gut microbiome? Because we know now that the gut microbiome in the lungs is important, but that the gut microbiome in the gut is important too. And so the nutritional factors that I will highlight to you today is advanced glycation end products, fiber, fatty acids, ultra processed foods with a focus on emulsifiers, plant-based foods and fermented foods. So advanced glycation end products is um, in foods that's been dried, fried, or uh, broiled, for example. Um, so things like, for example, um, broiled chicken or bro broiled beef have got very high levels of um, advanced glycation end products. They directly affect the immune system via their effect on TSLP and IL-33, but it also has an effect on the gut microbiome whereby it um, bifidobacteria and lactobacillus um, in the presence of ages have a protective role on inflammation. Um, e. coli secrete ages as the opposite and contribute to inflammation and lactococcus lactis um, also help with reduction in the absorption of ages. But I've listed a number of references there for further um, reading if you're interested. Um, we did recently a systematic review um, through the um, Iyaki workgroup on immunomodulation and nutrition. It's now been published in Allergy. And before we did the systematic review, I was not aware that there's actually studies been conducted in adults and children with asthma um, by increasing their fiber intake in um, randomized controlled trials. And very interestingly, when you look at the data in bold, you can see that fiber supplementation um, improved symptoms um, in those with allergic rhinitis, as well as those with asthma. So perhaps something we can think about when we see our uh, patients with um, asthma. Um, we also know that nutrients such as short chain fatty acids, which I've already highlighted, but also the long chain fatty acids, such as particularly omega-3 fatty acids, play an important role in asthma outcomes as 
they have an effect on reduced bronchoconstruction and reduced inflammation. Vitamin D is also important in asthma outcomes as it plays a role on T regulatory cell function in particular. And you can see here that egg yolks are one of the best sources of uh, vitamin D via the diet, but sensible sun exposure is probably the best way to get sufficient uh, vitamin D exposure. Um, ultra processed foods are important emulsifiers, as you know from the important work conducted by Chesmay actors, can really destroy the epithelial barrier of the gut microbiome, and we really need to know more about what it does to the epithelial layer of the lungs. Um, there's a wide range of emulsifiers available, over 50 in the U.S. food supply. Um, then going on to plant-based foods, the American Gut Study showed that intake of more than 30 plant-based foods a week um, improve gut microbiome um, structure and function. Um, fermented foods are also important. Um, I've already um, showed the importance uh, role between lactobacillus and reduced functioning of ages, thereby um, reducing inflammatory processes. And here you can see that fermented foods actually increase um, lactobacillus um, abundance. Um, and so I will summarize here by saying my take home messages are a beneficial microbiome in both the gut and the lungs affect the immune system and a beneficial immune system may reduce asthma symptoms and improve asthma outcomes. Simple healthy eating, uh, focusing on reduced intake of dry fried foods very high in ages, looking at fiber intake, looking at fatty acids intake, particularly omega-3, vitamin D intake, reducing intake of processed foods and thereby emulsifier consumption and improving um, our intake or variety of plant-based foods um, alongside fermented foods may help with better asthma outcomes. And so with that, I would like to thank you for your time.